Hey, I'm Brian Van, SportBikeTrackHere.com. Today we're going to break down the all-new AGV K3 full-face helmet. The all-new AGV K3 retails from $259 to $349. That span is going to go from solid colors all the way up to your Rossi replica graphics like we're showing you here on the table right now. Let's jump into sizing. I measure 58 centimeters on the money with an intermediate oval head shape. I would say that this helmet, the interior shape of the helmet, is absolutely intermediate oval. The size chart for me at 58 centimeters recommends a medium. I got a good, comfortable fit. I did not ride in this helmet, but I wore it on my desk for a long time. It is glasses friendly. We're going to show you some B-roll of that. The glasses slid in place and were held in a position where they felt really comfortable. So AGV did a solid job with that. This helmet weighs 3.65 pounds on our digital shipping scale. It is a thermoplastic resin shell. They use three shell sizes, extra small through medium, large, and then extra large up to 2X. They are using four EPS sizes for this helmet as well. You'll notice the outer profile of the helmet is rather small. When you have this on, it does not have a big bulbous look to it, which is something that many riders do gravitate towards. This helmet is ECE 2206 as well as DOT certified. It ships complete with a chin curtain, as well as a pin lock fog resistant lens. These things work amazing. You put them in fog free forever. The K3 offers a drop down tinted inner shield. The switch is on the left side of the helmet. Clear outer shield, and there's really no reason to put a tinted outer shield on this. You have the tinted inner shield that drops down at the flip of a switch, leave the clear with the pin lock on the outside. It's going to get you the nice fog-free performance that we all want on those, those muggy days, right, or the cooler mornings. And then when you need the tint, just slide the lever and away we go. Ventilation. We have intake vents here on the chin. I do like the style of that vent. It looks pretty cool. Two intake vents up here, switchable on the brow. Your exhaust vent is back here on the back of the helmet. One little knock for the vents, right? I'm sure they're fine, but they just feel a little to the cheap side. That's all. That's going to be my comment there, just the way the switches kind of stick up, the action when you slide them. I'm sure they're going to hold up, but they feel a little bit to the cheap side. One thing that AGV did do with this is it has a shield crack. You push up on that switch for riders that like to ride around with a shield just cracked. This holds it open that perfect amount so you don't have to fiddle with the detents on the helmet because you'll see that first detent, that's pretty high up. Most don't want to ride with the shield cracked in that position. So you just go ahead and push that button right there and you are good to go. Retention system. This is using a micro metric steel retention system. Some people like these, some people don't. There's a lot of adjustability here. You're able to adjust the chin strap, which I did not have to do. And then there are multiple levels of adjustment here to really help you dial in that fit. The interior of the helmet is super comfy. Like I said, it felt great when you had it on. This is gonna be best suited for, obviously, street riding. Any one of the helmets that has the drop-down inner screen, the convenience that provides, it does come at a little bit of a price, okay? That price being, that shield rides in between the shell and the EPS of the helmet. In order to facilitate putting that in there, you have to do a couple of things. The ventilation needs to move higher up on the helmet. It becomes a little bit less effective the further up it gets. That's something that I've found over the years. The other thing it does is the helmet needs to be just a little bit thicker in the brow area to allow for the thickness and the gap for that shield. So when you're in a tuck position, in a, like a race tuck on a racetrack position, it's a little thick in the brow and it can close your field of vision 
from top to bottom off just a little bit. If you're not interested in the drop down inner screen, right? Or if you've heard the, oh, it affects the ventilation a little bit. And also, you know, it affects your visibility a little bit in a full tuck. The helmet, if you're into the AGV lids, that I'm gonna steer you towards is the all new K1S. That helmet has epic ventilation and it does not have the drop down inner screen. So you don't have any of that additional thickness in the brow of the helmet restricting your vision. I think I've covered all of the features and the benefits. If you want to see what it looks like when we take it apart, stay tuned for the second part of this video. Okay, let's go ahead and start off with the shield. To remove the shield on this helmet, open it up all the way. You're going to want to grab this switch right here and just pull down on it and then pull out. Pull down, rotate out like so. To reinstall it, what I like to do is I like to, you have to always first get it up in that upward most position, but this tab right here on the top of the shield, you want to rotate that into the shield pivot and then just push down. You'll hear an audible click indicating that it's jumped into place. Once you have the one side done, come over to the other side and just simply repeat the process. like so. Before you go out and ride, raise and lower it a couple of times to make sure that it is locked into place. Next up, interior removal. To remove the cheek pads, you're going to want to slide your fingers in between the backing of the cheek pad and the EPS of the helmet. You'll feel three snaps in there, one at the very top, one at the front, one towards the back. You release each one of those. Then you grab the cheek pad itself and I want you to pull out and then forward. Give you a look at the interior. The quality is good. The fabric is comfortable. Mirror image of course on the other side. For the top pad, we have two snaps here in the back. Kind of pull that out a little bit. And then up here in the front, this is gonna be very difficult to capture on camera, but there are some tabs up in here. I actually really like what they did with the top pad. They are right here. And they simply slide into a retainer, lock into place. Quality of the top pad is as what we noted with the cheek pads. Quality and comfortable. Looking inside the helmet, you can see the channels for the EPS to aid in the ventilation. And then if you want to install a Bluetooth communicator, this helmet has been prepped to accept such a unit. There are little cutouts that are held into place where the speakers would go. You can see there's a little channel for the wire to run up to and everything. Those are held in with adhesive, so when you pull it out, you'd have to glue it back into place, or maybe if the adhesive there, you know, is still intact when you pull it out. But the speakers go right there. Molded chin bar, right? It's kind of relieved a little bit here in the chin area, which is nice, a little extra room for the rider. All in all, a good quality helmet at a reasonable price with some kick-ass Rossi graphics, which never hurt anybody's feelings. If you like what you see, but you have more questions, go ahead and leave those in the comment section of this video. I answer all that stuff myself, and I'm always here to make sure you choose the right gear for your next ride.